Whether you like to lay at the beach and enjoy the summertime, or maybe you just want to go for a walk or a cycle trip to the dunes or the forests near and around The Hague, you like to visit a theme park, go skiing even in the summertime, visit the rich cultural life of The Hague with lots of theaters, museums and galleries, or you just like to do some shopping, The Hague does have a lot to offer. This video is totally different from the videos I normally make. Normally I create trip reports and show you what it's like to travel on train and try to encourage people to choose for the train instead of the plane or the car. But since I record this in 2020, traveling wasn't really an option. So I just created a themed city guide. So I don't have to travel, but I can give you some inspiration for your next trip. Hereby I'll present the ultimate train viking city guide of The Hague in the Netherlands for train geeks. Before we start the video, I want to say something. When you're new to the channel and you like to see more train related videos, there are not that many trains in this video, but well, you get the point. Subscribe to my channel. When you have any question or when you just want to say hello, just leave a comment. And of course, when you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Welcome to the town where I was born. I wasn't raised here, but I do live here again since about four years from now. So traveling wasn't really an option in this summer. In the summer and the fall of 2020, I did some touristy stuff in my hometown. It's also just a fun way to support your local economy. Isn't going to be the average city guide. As you already may expect from the title of this video, this will be a themed city guide. Well, train related, obviously. So this video isn't about where you can find the finest architecture best place to go to for coffee, restaurants, or the best viewing points in the city. By the way, over there in that tower, you find a bar and a restaurant at the top floor, and the view over the city is absolutely great from there. It's gonna be totally different than all my other videos. And this might be a new standard for new kind of themed city guides. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like to see more videos like this? Just let me know in the comments. But I really want to also show you something that's not train related in the city because I like a lot more things than only trains. So I will also show you a tiny bit of, well, what normal city guides videos will do, I guess. Well, now we can start with the real deal. The Hague is the third largest city of the Netherlands and not far away from the second largest city of the Netherlands, what is Rotterdam. The metropolitan area of The Hague and Rotterdam is one area where approximately two and a half million people do live. In The Hague, you'll find a very small harbor by the sea, but not far away from here, in Rotterdam, you'll find the biggest sea harbor in Europe. North from the sea harbor of The Hague, you will find the coastal town of Scheveningen. Nowadays, Scheveningen is just a neighborhood of The Hague. Over here, you find a pier by the sea. This is actually the only pier in the Netherlands. And at the pier you find a big ferris wheel, one of the icons of The Hague. Another icon is the Koolhaus Hotel that has been built in Art Nouveau style. Most buildings in Scheveningen used to be in Art Nouveau style until they were replaced by flashy high-rise buildings near the coast in the 1960s. Along the boulevard over here you will also find a museum sculptures by the sea. Well, when you want to find out more, just take the tourist tram. I'm also featuring the tourist tram that will go to Scheveningen. South from the harbor of Scheveningen, you will find the Zuiderstrand. And right next to this, you will find a big park, what is called the West Town Park. In the nature over here, you find lots of bicycle lanes, walking paths, and the most quiet beaches of The Hague. And this is also what makes The Hague really unique. You have lots of nature, but it's also a big city. You have the comfort of a big city, but also the peace and quietness. Well, it's not like you're living in the countryside, but you will have something like the peace and quietness of the countryside. As you can see here, there's lots of green. But when I'm pointing the camera a little bit more towards the city center, you will also find some high-rise buildings. The Hague is actually one of the very few cities in the Netherlands where you find a skyline. 
Something else that's pretty unique is the history of The Hague. Well, I won't go too deep in this because this is a train related video, but I will tell you a little bit about it. Throughout the Middle Ages, this has never been categorized as a city, but even throughout the Middle Ages, this place hasn't been categorized as a village either. What is unique about the Netherlands is that The Hague is functioning like the capital, but it is not the capital. You will find all governmental institutes, but also embassies in The Hague. And the capital of the Netherlands is Amsterdam. Well, when it comes to this, the history is pretty interesting. But, well, once again, I'm not making a history video. I'm making a train related video where I will talk about everything but trains in the beginning. Where I'm cycling through right now is called the Binnenhof. This is where the government is at. And the building with the towers that's right in front of me is the oldest building of The Hague. This was actually built as a hunting house in the middle of the forest. And well, slowly The Hague popped up around this place. And right now it's in the middle of the city. The bike lane where I'm on right now will go right through this governmental complex. And in my opinion, this is also one of the prettiest bike lanes you can find in the Netherlands, at least in an urban area. The International Court of Justice is also located within The Hague. Therefore, The Hague is international known as the city of peace and justice. By the way, you can visit the International Court of Justice as well. The building is really pretty from the inside, but you're not allowed to take pictures or to make films. Just like you'll find most governmental buildings in The Hague, you'll also find most royal buildings over here. This is the working palace of the king, for example, what is located at the North Einde. When you want to travel back in time, you can visit the Panorama Mestag. This is a 14 meter high and 120 meter wide panorama painting of the town of Scheveningen in the year 1881. Within this museum you also find lots of contemporary exhibitions. For example, this photography exhibition when I was here. Something that should not be mistaken by the Panorama Mestag is the Mestag Collectie, so the Mestag Collection Museum. Apart from being a great artist, Mestag was also a big collector of art. And the Mestag Collection Museum does host a big part of his private collection. The Hague is home to the oldest shopping mall of the Netherlands, the Passage. And in my opinion, this is also the prettiest shopping mall of the Netherlands. It's located in the heart of the city center. When it comes to shopping, of course, you will find the bigger shopping streets with the brands everybody knows. But when you move a little bit back to the smaller streets near the North Einde Palace, you will find lots of more unique shops cafes and restaurants. Actually, I like this part most. In The Hague, you also find a Chinatown. This Chinatown is one of the biggest Chinatowns in the Netherlands and some street names here are written in Chinese as well. This is home to one of the best Asian restaurants in The Hague, although one Uyghur and Korean restaurant that are not located here are really great as well. Well, I'm actually talking way too much about other things than where this video should be about. But when it comes to cultural life, it's absolutely worth naming the Kunstmuseum, formerly known as the Gemeentemuseum, and Museum Vorlin. At the Kunstmuseum, you'll find a big collection of both contemporary and ancient art. And at the Vorlinde Museum, you will only find contemporary art. I guess the Fall in the Museum is one of the most Instagrammable museums you can find in the Netherlands. And this is also really pretty located in the middle of the nature. Actually, the Fall in the Museum is not within The Hague, it's just outside The Hague in Wassenaar. The Voorlinde Museum is not only known for being a museum, but it's also known for its great gardens. One of the last things I really want to mention is the pop-up store, The Hague Finest. This is a shop where you find lots of local products and this is a pop-up store. It will be here at least until January 2021, but there might be some extension and maybe they will find a new spot for this shop. You can find more information in the link that will pop up somewhere on your screen right now. As I mentioned in the introduction of this video, I will make a part 2 of this The Hague City Guide. And that part 2 will be about the railway stations and how to get around. 
In The Hague you'll find a sophisticated tram network and you'll also find lots of buses. But there are other ways to get around as well. More of this in the other video. For now, let's start with the themes of this video and let's start with the train related stuff. I'll start off by showing you the tourist tram. This is a hop on and hop off tram. Just like in many other big cities, you will also find a hop on and hop off service. Except in The Hague, it's in an old tram. This tram will take the route you can see over here. But of course, I will take you along with this tram as well. Actually, I started this trip at the central railway station, but the official starting point is in the city center. When you take this tram, you will get a small guide with a map and some information about the sites along the way. Earplugs you can connect to an automatic guide, and this guide is available in many languages. The best thing about this guide, it's also available in a The Hague dialect. <laughs> Rustig! <laughs> well, you need to speak Dutch for this, obviously. This tram will take you along some pretty sides of the city. Lots of museums, the Peace Palace, and well, lots of other things. A unique feature of the tourist tram is that it will go for a big part along the oldest tramway route you can find in the Netherlands. That's between the coastal town of Scheveningen, what is right now just the neighborhood of The Hague, and the city center of The Hague. And doing this route in an old vehicle that used to be in the city of The Hague makes it even more nostalgic. This way you will keep a tiny bit of the tramway history of The Hague alive. By the way, the color scheme on these trams is not the same color scheme as you will find on the original trams. When you want to see these trams in the original color scheme, you can visit the The Hague Public Transport Museum, where I will also take you to. By the way, this tram is also being operated by this museum. In general, the tourist tram will run in the time frame from April to October. It's not every day, so please check the website of the tourist tram. It will pop up somewhere right now on your screen. And I'll also make sure there's a link in the description of this video. Tram stops where these tourist trams go to are easily recognizable by the tourist tram logo. And within these trams, you will find dedicated line maps. Because I don't want this video to take forever, I won't let you see the sites where these trams do stop. But you can look it up at the website of the tourist tram. Between the city center and Scheveningen at the coast, you will find Madurodam, miniature city. And this also includes lots of miniature trains. You will also find quite a lot of stations I already did a trip report about or featured in one of my videos. For example, Falkenburg, as you can see here. This is the oldest station building still in use. Some of these train formations don't run in the Netherlands anymore, but others do. Utrecht Central Station, the busiest railway station of the Netherlands, is also featured here. I do have videos where I'll be featuring a lot of things in real life as you can see over here. I'll be sure there will be a link in the description of the video where I'll be featuring all those things. For example, Groningen Railway Station. The funny thing is, when I filmed the railway station of Groningen, it was being refurbished big time. Over here you can see how it used to be before the refurbishment. By the way, you also find a dedicated high speed line over here, with a very tiny valley straight. But this place isn't all about miniature trains, it's miniature city. So you will also find lots of landmarks within the Netherlands, all at one single place. Some things are really frozen in time. For example, the Steinline HSS you can see over here. This used to be the ferry between the Netherlands and the UK, but now they do have other vessels. Despite the fact that this place isn't all about the trains, you will find trains and trams all over the place. All the landmarks you see here are a representation of the Netherlands. Some of them are pretty famous and others, well, they're not that famous. Everything over here has been built on a scale of 1 on 25. So everything you see here is 25 times as small as in real life. You'll find quite a lot of landmarks you can find in The Hague as well. When you pay some good attention on this video, you will see quite a lot of these landmarks within my video over here as well. Apart from all the miniature buildings, you will also find some interactive games you can play. And well, for kids there is just in general a lot to do. But well, I'm not showing you that in this video. I bet this place is also home to the coolest vending machine you can find in the Netherlands. As you can see here. 
even though everything has been built on a scale of 1 on 25. The Euromast, the highest building in the Netherlands, still looks pretty tall here. A big part of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport and some highways have been made here as well. And what I really like, you won't see famous places everybody knows, but also some places you wouldn't visit that often normally. Like for example, the harbor of Rotterdam. Over here you find quite a lot of ferries, both domestic and international. And when you're hungry for Dutch food, you also find a restaurant over here. When you want to visit this place, it's open all year round. But since a big part is outside, I strongly recommend you to go here when it's not raining. You can buy tickets on the website of Madurodam that will pop up somewhere right now on your screen. And this brings us to the next stop, at the Zuider Park. Over here you'll find a serious railroad crossing. And less serious trains. So this train related city tour brings me to places I've never been to. Um, for example here at the Zuider Park you have this miniature railway line. And actually you can ride some of them as well. Um, these are by the way real steam engines, that's really funny. Um, Personally, I wouldn't go here that often, but well, I don't have kids, but as a kid, I would have loved this. This place would be amazing. Uh, right now, I prefer the real deal, so I prefer to travel on real trains. Anyway, I will explain you more about this place with the use of a voiceover. In the middle of the Zuider Park, you will find the terrain of Stoomgroep West. Stoomgroep West is a hobby club for railway enthusiasts that has been established in 1975. Apart from this rusty old locomotive, you will only find miniature trains here. Over here, you find lots of railway enthusiasts that will play with tiny trains. You find, for example, this miniature railway over here, but you also find bigger miniature trains and railway tracks, as you can see here. Some railway enthusiasts ride their own miniature trains here and everything is very serious from signaling, switching, etc. Over here you find a signal box from where everything will be controlled. Switches, traffic lights, etc. You can also ride one of these trains. You can go for a small ride on the terrain itself or you can go for a bigger ride in the Zuider Park. I'll show you this in a bit. The smaller rides on the terrain itself will cost you 1 euro per ride, but when you go for a ride across the Zuider Park, you will pay 2 euros and 50 cents. When I visited this place, it was only possible to pay with cash money, so no cards are allowed. Keep this in mind. Lucky enough, I had some cash money with me, so I could go on a ride across the park. By the way, I think it's really cool that those steam engines you see over here are just real steam engines. This place isn't open all year round. In general, it's open from April to October and it's open on weekends. For the exact dates and times, just check out the website of Stone Group West that will pop up somewhere right now. For the next approximately 30 seconds, I'll show you some views from the tiny train of the Zuider Park. The tourist tram I just showed you is being operated by the Public Transport Museum of The Hague. The museum is located in an old tram depot at the Frans Halstraat in The Hague. Since 1983, old rolling stock has been stalled over here and since 1989 this place has been turned into a museum. Right now lots of trams are being replaced in The Hague as well, so they will be expanding very soon. And there's not a lot of space left anymore. The tram you see right here was used in The Hague between 1927 and 1965. Within this place you will find lots of information about the history of The Hague public transport as well. The only downside, it's only available in Dutch. This place is only opened on Sundays, so keep this in mind. This is actually the first year that it's opened all year round. The previous years it used to be only open in the summertime. The tourist tram I just did a trip in The Hague with is one of these running stocks. These trams have been built in 1963 and these trams served until 1982. 
you can see one of the tourist trams over here as well. Right next to the depot you'll find some expositions, where you'll find some miniature parts of The Hague, the scale model of the old central railway station and some pictures of well, public transport in The Hague. At the moment I recorded this, there was also an exposition about public transport in the Second World War. Over here you also find a shop and of course lots of scale models of trams in The Hague. You can also rent this space for events, but something that's even more awesome, well at least for smaller events, is this party tram you can rent. There's even a bar inside of this. I think this is really cool. And because this is a public transport museum, you can also go for a ride with one of the old running stocks. And this is also exactly what I did. These are actually the same tram types as they are using for the tourist tram, but this tram is not being modified for being a tourist tram. For the next approximately 30 seconds, I'll show you some views of The Hague from the tram. At last I'll show you something I haven't done yet in my own city. That's a ride with the Hoftram. The Hoftram is a refurbished tram where they built a full restaurant. Everything here works like a normal restaurant and the food here is just really good. This way you can enjoy great food and also enjoy the city. I absolutely love to do this one day. As you may guess this is a pretty popular restaurant so you need to reserve way in advance. Something else that's being owned by the same owner as the Hoftram is the Tramhuis. This is actually a restaurant that's not very big, where the kitchen has been built in an old tram. The tables are around it, it's really small and not open every day. For more information check out the website of the Hoftram and the Tramhuis that will pop up somewhere right now on your screen. Very last, I show you something that's not in The Hague, it's in Delft. But you can reach this by tram from The Hague, and also train by the way. In the old railway station of Delft, you will find an Italian restaurant. It's not really themed with trains, it's just an Italian restaurant. It's really nice though. The new railway station is right there, and the trams, they will stop right on the other side of the street. Although this restaurant is more themed with being an Italian restaurant than being a restaurant in an old railway building, it is still really a nice restaurant and you will be reminded about the former function every now and then as well. For example the terrace at the back, this used to be at the old platform. The new railway station has been built underground. Because of its location you will find lots of ways to get here. Trains, buses and tram number 1 from Scheveningen and the city center of The Hague and tram number 19 from the outskirts of The Hague. Something that wasn't open yet at the moment I recorded this video, but will open its doors from early 2021, is Legoland Discovery Center in Scheveningen. Over here you find a big part of The Hague in miniature, and they have used more than 1 million Lego bricks to build all this. As a kid I loved to play with Lego. And I definitely want to visit this place when it's officially open. You can visit the website of Legoland that will pop up somewhere on your screen right now for more information. There is so much more I'd love to tell you, but I don't want this video to take forever. When you want to find out more, you can go to the website of the tourist information or just visit the tourist information. They do have a great souvenir shop as well. When you're interested in trip reports I did, in the description of this video you'll find a link to a map and on this map you will find all trip reports I did. The train icons do indicate the station reviews and the lines do indicate the routes of these trains. Hopefully you like this video. When you like it just give me a thumbs up and like I mentioned in this video there will be a part 2 and in part 2 I'll be featuring the main railway stations of The Hague. There are two main railway stations, the Hague Central Station, where I'm at right now, and the Hague HS, what is the oldest railway station. There's also a third intercity railway station, probably I will show you this briefly as well. And in that video I also show you how to get around, so I'll explain the tram network, the bus network, 
there are some e-scooter and e-bikes well e-bike and normal bikes sharing programs here as well so i will explain that to you in the other video for now i hope you like it and when you like to see more train related videos well not like this but where i go out and explore other countries other places subscribe to my channel see you on my next video